Welcome back to Glenn Standard. Today we're going to be talking about target audiences and understanding them. So how do you define a target audience? Ooh. Uh, a tough one. Maybe we should talk about what it is first. Everybody probably knows. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so in, in my opinion, I mean, this isn't maybe Webster's opinion, but in my opinion, a target audience is somebody that you, a, a segment of a population that you are trying to go after for one reason or another. Okay, so that's a pretty big segment of a population. <laughs> yeah. Right? It can be. It can be really small. <laughs> so broad reads, super expensive. <laughs> Could be. Fantastic. Depending if you're going international, <laughs> locally, you know, whatever you want to do. You yeah. A lot, a lot of people in it with that segment. Do you break it down? And yeah. if you so, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, so I, I often, I mean, when I think of a target audience, I try to boil it down to a persona, right? Um, okay. I try to think of, okay, if I was going to go after one small segment of the population, mm -hmm. who would that be? Why am I going after them? What's the purpose, right? Uh, is it because the messaging needs to be different, right? Is it because I have a new product that matches and aligns with that target audience? Um, what's, what's the rationale for me to not just target the general population with something, right? Um, I think that gives you a lot of good understanding of A, who you're trying to go after and B, why, right? Um, okay, well, okay. So my product, I mean, it's maybe my product's a, a tire. Okay. Good for everybody, right? And for the most part. So why, unless not, you, why not go after everybody? Unless you have a very defined feature of a tire, right? right? So a good example of that is like Goodyear. They came out with some tires that had these rails that go through them. Um, when they, you know, I don't know how they shape tires, but sure. Um, when they're like molding the rubber, right? Mm -hmm. There's these, these channels and they're supposed to be better on water, right? For stopping on water and all that. Almost uh, sounds like every tire. <laughs> You'd think, but it's not. No, um, <laughs> that's where marketing and advertising comes in. So no, it's. Uh, but that that was that was the advertisement. It was that it was better for him. All the imagery that's used, the way they describe it, all of that is targeted towards parents because it's about keeping your kids safe, right? They don't know how to drive on water. Let's be honest, none of them do, right? So like get these tires and they're gonna be able to stop faster or they're gonna be able to control the car better in water and those kinds of things, right? Um, at the same time, the target audience for that particular tire could be the elderly, right? right? Uh, because they don't drive well either, I don't know, right? Say the same story, <laughs> just in a different way? Maybe, right? Um, and it really, it really, I think target audience helps define your messaging. Right. Okay, so how would you define that audience? And let's take the elder piece mm. and the, the parents. Mm -hmm. That's your audience. But you notice that didn't say the kids, even yeah. though that's really the audience that would use it, right? I mean, they would use it. They're the ones that would actually get those tires, but the parents would be the ones paying for it. So the target audience is actually the parents, even though the kids are the ones that are actually going to receive the okay, benefit. So we're hitting parents with the care, safety, blah, blah, blah. Of their children. Of the mm -hmm. children. Yep. And the elderly were doing it. You can do the exact same thing where it's mm -hmm. buy the tire from mom and dad who okay. can't drive well. So anymore. now we're breaking the overall audience now by personas. Correct. Elderly persona. Right. Parents, whatever you want to call those, right? Right. And then we're going to target within both of those. Mm. So we're taking that broad audience and now, which is a target, and we're defining it down because let's be honest, nobody has enough money to hit everybody all the time. Right? Uh, and Pepsi has enough, I think. It could be. Maybe. Maybe. Or Coke or yeah. any of those big guys. You're a huge mass to spend all the time across the world. Yeah. But it goes away real fast. I, I bet it does. <laughs> <Media's not cheap. laughs> no, that's true. But yeah, but yeah, I, th I think most of the time, um, target audience to me is, is that necessary evil, right? Especially in today's world when we're talking about how granular we can get with our target audiences as well, right? Um, right. And in, in, in a digital realm, right? Well, let, let's touch on okay, that. It's sorry. Running yeah. digital, right? <laughs> so that's part of how we define the target audience. Right. It's one way, right? So talk a little bit about how, how we do it. Mm. Maybe that'll help. I mean, uh, from a digital standpoint, you mean? Just in general. Or just in general. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we typically go with persona building um, and, and starting to narrow that in. Um, 
first and foremost, it starts with, you know, us meeting with our clients and going, who is your audience? Who is your, uh, I think we have maybe different conversations than other agencies. But what if they don't know who their audience is? Right. So then we can go into who's most profitable, who in your past history of your company, looking at actual hard numbers and facts and sales, right? Who is that person? Uh, if they don't have any of that information at all, you can ask, right? Yeah. So you start surveying a little mm -hmm. bit, um, reaching out that way. I think you're right. Defining who your top 10 best customers, because at the end of the day, yep. probably we want more of those. Yeah. What's unique about all of them? Do they all drive the same type of car? It's a four door sedan. Right. Do we know they typically live in suburbs mm. or apartments? Mm. We start to learn a little bit about those top 10, top 20, top 30 customers. Yeah. Okay, we know these are common things about them. Now, let's let's do some outreach and find everyone else within this geo-targeted area where we want to increase sales that have similar interests. Right. And now you're defining that audience, so now you can start to target them as well. And some of that can honestly be done nowadays with AI, right? Um, which is really nice. So, like you look at companies that have massive amounts of data that they're analyzing and making connection points on, like Facebook and Google and those yep. guys, right? Um, they're able to build that audience for you, right? So they have lookalike audiences, right? And I can say, okay, my top one percenters of people that buy my product or are most profitable for me, I can say, okay, this is the top 1% of profitable customers, right? And I can just look at that, pull all that information in using just an email address or phone number, putting it into Google, and as long as I have enough of those people, I can say, build me an audience that looks like this, that acts like this, their right. online search history is like this, they, they engage, they consume media the exact same way, right? It allows me to then, rather than going, I wanna hit parents, right? They may not all be parents. They could be across the board. They could be and different you ages. you learn that your target audience may need to shift because they're not parents. Right. And you thought they were. Right. And, and it helps you, I think, just understand more and more about Okay, like realistically, if our top top percentage people, right, and we're building that lookalike audience, they could be 25, and this is not usually the case, but 25 to 48, right? Right. Oh my gosh, like how do we target the audience or messaging or anything like that? But what we do know about those that demographic for whatever company this is, um, we know that that they need our product because they are the people that are buying our product, right? So we can find more of those people. What do they have in common, right? And then you look at your spend history too. Right. Who typically buys more? Right. The 30 to 35 year old, the 28 to 26 year old, okay, let's push more dollars there. Mm. Now we make more money. Give us more money to put towards your other audiences later type of thing. Take that even a step further. Okay. What you may find is that between the hours of 12 to one, okay. Yep, the point. people that are an older demographic are more active because they are on their lunch break, right? At their corporate America jobs and they're Watching finally- Watching right yeah. in the morning kind of thing. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. Uh, I mean, that's what we do. Okay. As they, you know, put the paste on their dentures before they go out the door. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, but then you nice. may find like, you know, the 25 to 35 year olds, the demographic, for you could run that whole gamut, but what you'll find is there, are they more active at a certain time? Does right. messaging, um, the other thing that you look at is what part of the funnel they're coming in at, right? Okay. Um, so it may be, is it more just, it's a very complex, convoluted uh, product that you're selling that helps solve a situation or a challenge that they may be facing, but it, it needs a lot of explaining. Okay, well that's top of the funnel. How do I solve this? How do I make this change? How do I accomplish this, right? getting down to once somebody knows your brand, they've in a, had a couple of teaching, touch points. Yeah. Teaching people about your product and your brand. Right. Taking that next step, okay, now they know and they we need to show them how they can use it in their daily lives. Right. Now we've done that, we need to convince them they have to have this in their daily lives type, right. of, type of approach. And here's the cost and this is what it is and, and you start hard selling towards the end of the bottom okay. of the funnel, right? So it may be that you're finding different times for different age groups in different, you know, mobile versus desktop versus TV, right? All of that media mix starts mm -hmm. to be a bigger role and play a huge part in how do we actually define getting people in the door and getting them there. Okay, so, so why is it important to define that? It's very important because I, 
I believe, um, when it comes to advertising, uh, branding and all of that, right, and messaging, if the, the clearer you can be and the, the more understanding and knowledge that you have of who your audience is, where it comes from, what kind of results you can expect from that, um, it helps you put together that better mix, right? So what you may see is that, okay, we know that our audience is 25 to 35 year olds who live in the DFW area who um, are typically on their phones at night. Fantastic. We can shove all of our ad spend to that exact moment on a digital front and we can make sure that we're spending it effectively to get the most return on our investment. Right. And that's the thing, the more defined that you can get with your target audience, the better return on your investment you're typically gonna have. We're gonna spend dollars, leverage them to mm -hmm. be the most effective. Thing yeah, exactly. That's why it's important to define. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Right, so like if commuters isn't one of your target audiences, maybe billboards don't make a ton of sense. But if they are, they're absolutely one of the best ways to do it, and they're a traditional thing, right? Or they may be a great target, it's just they're not a big enough target right now for what we're trying to do. Right. And they may become that target later. Right. right? Or if you're trying to hit mass population because right. you just launched a new app that's for everybody, maybe TV, radio, and billboard are fantastic for those. Over, Even though they're traditional marketing, right? Um, you would think an app, well, you got to do that on the phone, right? I mean, that's where it's going to be downloaded, so it makes the most sense. Not necessarily, right? right. Um, hitting an overall general population may be better for you for the initial launch campaign, right? To get mm -hmm. as many people talking about it as quickly as possible. Spread the word that way. Yeah. What about you know, when you think about industries, just mm. in general, like ad industry, construction industry, uh, whatever, or it could be fashion, right? Yeah. Do they all generally have the same target audience? I like like industry, like they're, yeah. we'll take construction, right. right? There's a ton of companies that do that, different parts of it and whatnot, but at the end of the day, do is they? the industry as a whole, is it the same audience? I would say no. Okay. Um, the way I think about it, so I'm thinking of like development company, okay. right? Um, so when I'm thinking of a development company, there may be something that is very unique, um, or you may only build homes that are million dollar plus, right? Okay. Versus lower income homes. So custom right? home or Yeah. Okay. Right? So um, it, it's, to me at that point, your target audiences are very different. You can both be extremely successful, right? One so company. So the, the overall industry, and then kind of break it down a little bit, right. is people who want to buy a home. Yeah. If we're going to take that industry and break it down by custom home builders. Yeah. Our audience, people who want to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Now breaking that down by company, our audience is that, just like everyone else in the industry, but ours have to have a million dollars plus right. annual income or 500,000, whatever, whatever that is, is yeah. right? Because we're only gonna build this type of home. Right. Ours, we're gonna build $250,000 homes, so our audience is this, they're younger, and we're gonna have bigger yards for playgrounds in the backyard, right? right? So we want, we want young adults that are thinking about having families. And we're going to develop our community around that. Right. So that's who we want to target. So right. now we're breaking down that broad into the So I would say in the industry again. as a whole, yeah. I don't think there's necessarily a target audience. Mm -hmm. It's just more of you start to define that based on your company, right? I guess if you could look at it in very broad terms, yeah, overall the construction, home building. It has to a little bit because that's why you have association groups, right? Well, yes, yes. Um, I mean, same with like car dealers, right? Okay. It, you're not going to target people who commute every single day, right? I mean, like, New York doesn't make a ton of sense to try to sell cars in New York. Maybe it does, but a car club might make a lot more sense, right? right? Because those are the people that realistically could afford a car and a garage in New York, right? Yeah. Um, but most of the general population there using public transport so what's what's really the point of spending money doing that right um but i would say yeah most most of the auto industry is looking for somebody trying to buy a car right or they're yeah. excited about a car there but there's a very big difference between a bugatti and a honda right um and knowing that audience and i and here's the other side of that right honda can advertise worldwide almost all the time about their car and they're going to hit most of their audience right? Just doing general. 
Bugatti, I guarantee you, has a list of people oh, that is sure. very small that they yep. pick up the phone and they go, we got a new model rolling out this next year. They probably don't do much advertising at all, right? Yeah. It's probably in brochures or or VR or AR. They right? put it on the street by Harrods yeah. in downtown London. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they're just like, go yeah, ahead, this is it. <laughs> yeah, you want that because look, look it's just all part of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do want that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, you know... It, target audience plays a definite role for most companies right um the more you get but that's the thing bugatti has defined their audience down to a a list of people okay let me let me break it down a different way and see okay. how I this thing. um i make shirts t-shirts filter okay. trainer, embroidery like ours okay okay find my audience if, if that's your business to find that audience for me that does this yeah hmm um obviously business owners right okay um i would go with if it, it depends right the other side of it is capacity right so if i have a small shop so and it's capacity small is defining your audience is why it's why you should define maybe your audience. Okay. maybe right uh do i want to grow do i not want to grow how big do i want to scale all those kinds of things do i want the headache of managing 100 employees or not um those kinds of things all play a role oh, in it, absolutely right um because as a silk screener yes you can absolutely do that but then you're going after giant corporation accounts, right? Like CentOS. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I want to do all of CentOS. I want to do all of their stuff. I want to embroider only that, right? Okay. Yeah, you can probably do it. It'll, your sales cycle to go get that type of account is probably a little bit longer. But the payoff on it is probably much larger, right? Or as a mom and pa shop, you can immediately start calling all of the small businesses around you. Doing 100, and trying, 100 yeah. at a time, 50 yeah. at a time. Yeah, 10, 15, 20s, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, build that up, but maybe that's fine for you. Maybe that capacity is good for you. And I think that's important, to, and the reason I ask you that is whether you go with a big luxury brand like Bugatti mm. or something down to, could be a mom and pop shop down the street corner, it's important to know who you are as a company, who you want to be, and that's why you have to define your audience. Otherwise, you will be spinning your wheels going, Everyone is my target. Everyone needs a shirt, and all those dollars go out. Yeah, and you're not getting a lot of return, or the things you're getting don't fit what you want to do. Okay, I need 15 shirts. Well, I really only want to do 200 at a time. I don't make any money doing 15. Well, then why did you spend money reaching that audience? Because they think you do. Yeah, and that's the story you told. Right. Right. Well, and I think that's part of it too. Right. Your target audience needs to marry your messaging, right, mm -hmm. and in a big way. I think that's the key. Yeah, because cause if you can, the right person at the right time in the right place makes all the difference. Right. 100%. That's how advertising, marketing, and branding work, right? Yeah. Is really defining those three things, finding them, and making sure that they all match and line up with whatever you're trying to sell them. It, it makes it so much easier when you're like, you know, I'm hungry for a candy bar. There's a candy bar right there, and I'm going to go pick it up. Yep, that's... That's what I'm gonna okay, do. I know you just looked over there, but when yeah. you say that, what's the first candy bar that comes to your head? Uh, me only because of well, <laughs> what's really bad is I think of my parents' candy store all the time, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have that kind of uh, like burned that's into my the brain. Place goes. I kind of have the Mr. Good Bar for some reason. Really, Mr. Good Bar? How random is that? Do they advertise? That I yeah. know of. No. But well, see, and I'm, but I'm surprised because for you, being from Europe, right? Yeah. It, is there a childhood angst where you're like, gosh, I wish I had a Mr. Flaky. I don't know what they have over there. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is, is there a bar that you were like, oh, I'd kill for that? You yeah, know? but I'm, part of it's I'm not a big candy bar eater. Right. right. And when I think of them, there's a lot. It depends on just maybe it's my mood. Right. It pops in or maybe it's the last thing I saw. Maybe I saw one somewhere. So now it's in my head. But right. the brand recognition, the placement, the amount that it would cost for them to distribute over here doesn't make sense for them. So you're not their target audience. Right. But you really have a desire to have that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a missed yeah. opportunity for them, but exactly. at the same time. But am I really the target? Probably not. Probably not. It's not worth it. No, because the cost that it would cost them is ab absurd. Right. Right? And I think that's part of defining your audience as well. Absolutely. Adult. Is it just because they do hit the parameters, is it worth it? do it or should we be going somewhere else mm -hmm. that's where an agency really starts to help make sure you're spending the way you should spend to give you the best return on investment type of yeah thing. So. yeah absolutely and, that, and that's what i was going to say and kind of as a conclusion is you know one of the best things that an agency can do is help define that audience for you 
they can do the surveying, they can do the market research, they can mm-hmm. do a lot of those things. Well, a good agency can do a lot of those things. Um, <laughs> I always have to preface it. <laughs> um, Unfortunately. Uh, but if they're listening to our podcast, yeah. they should probably know that they can just yeah. call Glint and it would all be a result. Uh, but no, like the, a, a good agency is going to help you define that audience, right? They're going to constantly be de- defining, and probably more than likely, not just one. They're going, these are multiple segments that you could go after these are good audience groups for you and here's some creative messaging or a creative approach on being able to reach those people at the right time yeah. right so i think that's the important part is when you can get an agency or you can get um, the research done you can really start to understand your target audience and then put together very creative strategies um, because everybody that's selling an embroidered shirt wants to talk to a business right and how you're standing out exactly that's a whole different segment absolutely <laughs> so um but yeah i would say that's probably probably the when it comes to target audiences the best way to think about it oh so we'd love to hear from you guys uh email us agency at the glint if you have any questions we'd love to be able to talk about them i know we've done that in the past and even spotlighted a few people um uh, right. but um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. We actually do read those emails. So uh, agency at theglintstandard.com. And don't forget to like, follow, share uh, the podcast, no matter where you're listening. Or if you want to see what Craig and I look like, uh, you can also see us on YouTube. So thank you guys so much.